Can you check once if the link works? Yes, we can. Yeah, I got the link. Let me try to open it. Ah, uh, yes, Rudy. This I can. I'm in the room, so I'll send yeah, the link. Yeah, then return on that. Thank you. Very good. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam, Jai Shri Lakshmi Prabhu. Dhanvat Pranam, Mataji, Jai Shri Lakshmi Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam. Swami Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam. Chandra Prabhu, Dhanvat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam. Matri Dhanvat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam. Srinivas Prabhu Pranam, Matri Dhanvat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Dhanvat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Sorry for the confusion about the link. Om Ajnana Nirandasya Gyananjana Sharakaya Chakshavindalitam Yenatasmai Shri Guru Vinayana.
श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापित ये न भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मयम ददा स्वा कदा दिखा वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री युता पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णव श्री रूप सागर जात सागर रघुनाथ तम सजीव साधवैत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखांत हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचना गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्व भानु सुजय देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रिय वंशा कल्प तरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावने वैष्णव नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगु लंगाते गुरु यृपा तम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर so we are we will cover the fifth verse today how to deal with different kinds of devotees uh so <clears throat> there are three kinds of devotees and we will discuss little bit in more detail there is kanishta adhikari there is madhyam adhikari there is uttam adhikari and we'll try to understand um, these three different kinds of devotees how do we identify ourselves uh, how to make the transition from kanishtha adhikari to madhyam adhikari um, and the conclusions and the verse basically says uh, one should mentally honor uh, those who are kanishtha adhikari so adhikari means uh, um <clears throat> qualification basically um, madhya adhikari means they have medium qualification to practice krishna consciousness uttam adhikari means they have the highest qualification most qualified devotees kanishtha means new and also another word used is called neophyte devotees um, or new devotees or kanishtha devotees and there are multiple categories amidst them um so rupa goswami says here that one should mentally honor those who are kanishtha adhikari or beginning devotees then one should uh, um uh, <clears throat> bow down to those who are madhyam adhikari like kanishtha adhikari mentally honor uh, madhyam adhikari physically bow down uh, uttam adhikari one should serve them so in other words um, rupa goswami says no matter what kind of devotee one is at least mentally honor like one for example one may take up krishna consciousness but one may be very critical fault finding becomes angry very quickly or uh, um have unclean eating habits or uh, um yeah may have um, may not know how to speak how to deal uh, still one should mentally honor them just because they are devotees um, it doesn't mean that we should associate with them we should take inspiration from them we should follow them no but mental honor has to be done to anybody and then those who are madhyama more trained um um we should physically bow down respect them and those who are uttam adhikari we should minimally serve them and then we see the conclusions so here is the introduction we see there are various kinds of devotees but in a class who knows who is kanishta who is madhyama who is uttama there are like in a community there are all levels of devotees they all have different relationship with krishna and we should deal with all of them according to their advancement krishna consciousness uh, 
So this basically means how to deal with devotees. Now, previous verse we saw six loving exchanges like inquire confidentially, um, serve them prasad, uh, give them gifts, receive gifts, receive prasad. <clears throat> uh, one is reveal your mind and one is acquire confidentially so six loving exchanges so we cannot apply these six loving exchanges with, with anyone and everyone one has to see with who one is applying that's why there are different ways we deal with different devotees so first is prakrita bhakta or uh, uh, prakriti means material nature that's why Prakrita Bhakta means materialistic devotee. Or he is devotee, but he has material desires. He is uh, uh, heavily influenced by the three modes. And that's why he is called Prakrita Bhakta. He is still under Prakriti, but he chants the holy name of Krishna. So he becomes a materialistic devotee. A Kanishta Dikari is a neophyte who has received the Harinam initiation from the spiritual master. So Harinam initiation is... When you accept a spiritual master, he will give you a name. And under guidance of spiritual master, you chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So Prabhupada says the Kanishtha Dikari is a neophyte who has received the Harinam initiation from the spiritual master and is trying to chant the holy name of Krishna. One should respect such a person within his mind as a Kanishtha Vaishnava. Now, one may think that uh, um, then am I not a Kanishtha Dikari also? If I'm not initiated. Well, time, place, circumstances. Um, during that time, anybody who would chant 16 rounds even for a few weeks, few months, Prabhupada would initiate them. Um, later on, he made it one year. But initially, he would initiate them. Even one, two months, if we chant 16 rounds, he would initiate them. Means, okay, you have developed some faith. Um, um, so, uh, you accept a guru now. Um, but nowadays, ISKCON has changed. Now, people may be chanting for three years to five years and they, um, they, are, they haven't accepted the initiation yet. Time, times have changed now. So, um, this is one way, but we will see other category to understand Kanishtha Dikari more. Um, he's, he's trying to chant the holy name of Krishna. One should respect such a person within his mind as a Kanishta Vaishnava, a person who is very faithfully engaged in the worship of the deity in the temple, but who does not know how to behave toward devotees or people in general, is called a Prakrita Bhakta or Kanishta Adhikari. So this is another category, another uh, symptom is he doesn't know how to behave with devotees. Like when he sees the Lord, when he sees Krishna, he pays utmost respect, he offers flower, he offers arati, and then uh, when a devotee comes, he may find fault in a devotee, he may criticize a devotee, um, or he may just not deal properly. He may not give the um, required respect according to uh, the adhikar of a Vaishnava, Madhyama, Uttama, Kanishta. He doesn't know how to deal properly with devotees. And then he commits some offenses towards devotees also. So, um, neophyte, he has a lot of faith in Krishna, um, but he is not much interested in, in um, devotees. Then, those who are innocent but simply carried away by bad association should be shown favor if they are eager to receive proper instructions from pure devotees. So, um, these Prakrita Bhaktas, okay, two things are there. One is, um, we should mentally honor them, but we should avoid their association. We should maintain distance from them. Two things are there. If you are, say, um, helping somebody in their Krishna consciousness, if you are serving um, in that capacity, then, um, and if they are listening to you, even though they are untrained, then you should show favor, compassion, love, and help to train them. But then this is one instance. Another instance is uh, um, you go to temple and you see there are some people 
you meet with them and they say you know this temple president is like this he has all these problems and he is like this or then you don't want to hear those things then you mentally honor they are devotees you honor them but you don't associate with them but if somebody is okay he doesn't know how to deal he and but he's willing to listen he is willing to change his behavior to make progress if he is sincere then you should show uh, show him faith so those who are innocent but simply carried away by bad association should be shown favor because sometimes uh, somebody is very innocent but if they associate with those who are critical or they have fault finding tendencies then the innocent person may be carried away by their thoughts so those who are innocent but simply carried away by bad association should be shown favor if they are eager to receive proper instructions from pure devotees purposes so this is kanishta dikari received harinam initiation faithfully worship the deities don't know how to behave with devotees don't know how to behave with general public attached to a woman and money that's why he is called prakrita prakrita means prakriti he is under the mode of material nature so he has greed and he has lust as well um so naturally he will be attached to women and money and these devotees should be respected in mind those whose faith is soft and pliable is called a neophyte but by gradually following the process he will rise to the platform of a first class devotee gradually everybody will advance so there are three kinds of neophyte devotees there is prakrita sahajiya there is prakrita bhakta and there is hari nam bhakta so we'll see one by one chants hari krishna casually here and there chant 16 rounds of hari krishna mantra daily chant minimum 16 rounds of hari krishna daily attached to women money and intoxication follows for regulatory principles follows for regulatory principles has faith that krishna is god only serves guru and krishna feels he or she is the best disciple purpose says prakrita bhakta medilis devotees they have pride um they feel uh, um, there is something called pure devotee syndrome where when comes to krishna consciousness in the beginning and one feels that i am very sincere um and there is a pride of uh, thinking oneself as a high devotee as a very nice devotee um um i am one among the best of all the devotees so he has that feeling so he is a prakrita bhakta and harinam bhakta he serves vaishnavas guru and krishna in a, in a humble mode uh, then how to deal with them respected within one's mind but their association should be avoided respect such a person within his mind should be shown favor if somebody feels he or she is a best disciple pride is there but if they are chanting 16 rounds following regular principles but if they don't know how to deal with devotees and they their behavior is not proper they should be trained uh, one should show love and compassion um, then should be offered respectful obeisances mind words and body those who are fixed up initiated chanting 16 rounds following four regular principles um hari krishna shan i am in a class yeah okay okay one second so hari nam bhakta and prakrita bhakta um prakrita bhakta not yet trained things very high of himself um hari nam bhakta initiated chant 16 rounds following the four regular principles no meeting no gambling no intoxication no illicit sex humbly serves vaishnavas guru and krishna very sincere in one sadhana then he is called hari nam bhakta 
this Harinam Bhakta can make a transition eventually to Madhyama Bhakta, Madhyama Adhikari. Um, he should be offered, if you see a Harinam Bhakta who has undergone Harinam initiation, should be offered respectful obeisances, mind, words, and body. Prakrita Sajya, very much attached to material things, casually chants Hare Krishna, except Krishna is God. Um, respect within his within mind, uh, no need to take guidance or associate with him. But those who are cultivating them, they should continue to help them to come to Prakrita Bhakta stage. And Prakrita Bhakta, he, yeah, uh, very, very beginner um, and yeah, thinks high of himself, needs some more training. And then when, once he accept the stage of humility, tolerance, um, giving all respects to others, not expecting respect for oneself, chant sincerely, he can take initiation, become a Harinam Bhakta, and then stay there for some time, and then he can eventually make a transition to Madhyam Adhikari. Then Madhyam Adhikari, when one is actually initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, um, actually initiated means Brahman initiated, one, so there are two kinds of initiation. There is Harinam initiation and there is Brahman initiation. Harinam initiation is when you receive the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra from the lips of pure devotees. That is called Harinam initiation. Brahman initiation is when you receive Gayatri Mantra from the spiritual master. And uh, this is also called Sandhya Vandana. And you chant Gayatri three times a day. And then when you are Brahman initiated, you are allowed to serve the Lord in the temples, serve the deities in the temples, in his temples all over the world. So that is the actual initiation. It is said that Harinam initiation is the initial initiation and the real initiation is Brahman initiation. So um, one is actually initiated by one of our spiritual master and when he seriously engages in the service of the Lord, like he seriously makes Krishna as good of his life, and uh, he is seriously serving um, every week or if temple is sitting every day, all the time, every free time, he is fully trained in um, Krishna consciousness. Morning, he finishes minimum 16 rounds, um, very strict with regular principles, very strict with reading, hearing, association, services in the temple. Um, um, then um, he should be accepted as a Madhyam Adhikari. The Madhyam Adhikari is a devotee who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the highest object of Lord of love, makes friends with the Lord's devotees, is merciful to the ignorant, and avoid those who are envious by nature. So these are four characteristics of uh, a Madhyama Bhakta. Prema, Maitri, Kripa, Apeksha. Prema means he loves Krishna. Maitri, he makes friendship with devotees. Um, very good in Sangha. He knows how to deal with devotees. Um, Maitri, Kripa, he shares Krishna with those who do not have Krishna. Um, yeah, he helps others. And then apeksha means if somebody is envious of Krishna, he avoids them. Uh, so this is Madhya Madhikari. Then there are some more characteristics. Prema, love for Krishna. Maitri, friendship with devotees. Like you see here, friendship with devotees. Then Kripa, um, merciful to those who are innocent. Apeksha, avoid those who are envious. Avoid those envious means somebody says Krishna, yeah, I know Krishna. Um, or somebody doesn't like Krishna, avoid. Or somebody is not interested in spiritual life, avoid. Um, those who are interested in Krishna consciousness, if they're beginners, help them. If they're advanced, serve them or make good relationship with them. Then they are initiated, actually initiated. They are inconclusive means... Uh, they have not yet read all the scriptures and they cannot answer all the questions. Um, their conclusions is not very strong. Somebody can come and argue with them and they may not be able to put forward logical reasoning why they are doing what they are doing. 
so the conclusion is not very strong but they are faithful and undeterred undeterred means somebody comes and says god does not have a form and then a madhyam adhikari will try to say no no god does have a form krishna has a form krishna has two hands two legs he plays the flute and he has this loving relationship with his devotees and somebody say no see this is where the scriptures say he doesn't have a form and then he reads and he says oh he does not have a form how can i say that and then he become confused how is it possible so he may not be able to defeat if it is a negative word but may not be able to present logical arguments of the philosophy so in conclusion but next day also he will get up in the morning and chant his 16 rounds so he will not be deterred because his faith is very strong but he may not be able to convince anyone and everyone um because his he lacks confidence so that is a madhyam adhikari and then there is something more madhyam adhikari in this krishna consciousness a chance is given to everyone without discrimination of caste creed and color um chance is given to everyone to take up krishna consciousness everyone is invited to join this movement sit with us take prasad and hear about krishna when we see that someone is actually interested in krishna consciousness and wants to be initiated we accept him as a disciple for the chanting of the holy name of the lord so proper selling if somebody is interested and want to be initiated we accept them as a disciple when a neophyte devotee is actually initiated and engaged in devotional service by the orders of spiritual master he should be accepted immediately as a bona fide vaishnava and obeisances should be offered on to him out of many such vaishnavas one may be found to be very seriously engaged in the service of the lord and strictly following all the regulated principles chanting the prescribed number of rounds on japa beats and always thinking of how to expand the krishna consciousness movement such a vaishnav should be accepted as an uttama adhikari a highly advanced devotee and his association should always be sought so prabhupada says some of them would be like how to spread the krishna consciousness movement very very sincere they will sit they will put their full heart and focus in chanting 16 rounds um they will engage all their time in serving they have no ulterior motives krishna is the goal of their life humble service to all the devotees they will do whatever it takes to make progress um and they are always seeking how to expand krishna consciousness movement so prabhupada says many will be initiated but some of them will be found to be seriously engaged they should be known as very advanced devotees and they should be called as uttama adhikari um or who are basically thoroughly sincere um in their practices so different devotees will have different amount of faith um and based on one's faith that much seriously when we practice krishna consciousness everything boils down to faith so some people will have very weak faith then they will feel like yeah it's good it's nice and we'll do something here and there and it feels good so they are called prakrita sahajiyas or uh, neophyte devotees and then some of them would be very serious very sincere and some of them would be would become the promoter of krishna consciousness and they would they would want to sh- expand the mercy of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and lord krishna anywhere and everywhere so based on one's faith these activities are taken then how krishna sees an initiated devotee um, this is from chaitanya charitamrita lord chaitanya mahaprabhu says दीक्षा काले भक्ता करे आत्मा समर्पण सही काले कृष्ण तारे करे आत्मा समा एट द टाइम ऑफ इनिशिएशन दीक्षा काले काले मींस द टाइम द काल दीक्षा काले भक्ता करे आत्मा समर्पण एट द टाइम ऑफ इनिशिएशन वन सरेंडर्स टू द सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड एट द टाइम ऑफ इनिशिएशन व्हेन आई डिवोटेड फुली सरेंडर्स टू द सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड कृष्ण एक्सेप्ट्स हिम टू बी एज गुड एज ही हिमसेल्फ uh sei kale means at the same time krishna tare krishna will accept him kare atma sama krishna will think this devotee is just like me 
just krishna say just like i am very dear to myself likewise this devotee is as dear to myself as i am so the moment one accepts initiation and surrenders to the service of the lord immediately krishna accepts that devotee to be atma sama as good as he himself so this is lord chitane mahaprabhu who is krishna himself he is explaining how krishna sees a devotee who accepts initiation krishna says that immediately sei kale uh, krishna tare krishna tare sei kale krishna tare kare atma sama he is as good as myself then jiva goswami says at the time of initiation before initiation comes one should be disinterested material enjoyment and interested in advancement if now also we want more money some more uh, um women or you know interested in material desires uh, then one should not take initiation but one should wait and purify one's heart if one is not much interested in um uh, women and money and the goal of one's life is i seriously want to make progress and this is the most important thing one treasures krishna consciousness then one should look for initiation and then at the time of initiation one should surrender to the service of the lord um, at that time krishna accepts the devotee as good as himself so he is disinterested in material enjoyment and his focus is how to make progress how to go forward how to go forward and he is not interested in anything else we have seen many practical examples of this especially in europe and america many students who come to us from rich and respectable families quickly lose all interest in material enjoyment and become very eager to enter into spiritual life <clears throat> so prabhupada says we have practically seen in the western countries people who come from very rich background they quickly lose all interest in material enjoyment and become very eager to enter into spiritual life although they come from very wealthy families many of them accept living conditions that are not very comfortable indeed for krishna's sake they are prepared to accept any living condition as long as they can live in the temple and associate with the vaishnavas when one becomes so disinterested in material enjoyment he becomes fit for initiation by the spiritual master in other words should not have many material desires one should gradually purify develop the faith read the scriptures associate with vaishnavas chant the holy name of krishna um, and uh, the material desire should reduce up to certain extent at least and one should become interested only in making progress then at that point of time one becomes fit so initiation the quality of initiation means one is eager to make advancement eagerness to hear eagerness to advance for the advancement of spiritual life shrimad bhagavatam prescribes tapasa brahmacharye na samena cha damena cha when a person is serious about accepting diksha he must be prepared to practice austerity Uh, we perform many austerities like fasting on days like janmashtami or other festivals on ekadashis so these are practical austerities he must be prepared to practice austerity celibacy celibacy means no artificial use for sex urges or no sex life just for the sake of enjoyment so tapasa brahmacharyena samena cha damena cha control of the mind and body um body may have many demands unhealthy demands the mind um um may demand many things so one should control one's mind control the demand of the body the demand of the senses um practice celibacy um austerity so when a person is serious about accepting diksha he must be prepared to these things if one is so prepared and is desirous of receiving spiritual enlightenment divya gyan he is fit to be initiated means he is interested in um um divya gyan um, and like 
एनलाइटनमेंट स्पिरिचुअल एनलाइटनमेंट सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन और एडवांसमेंट प्योरिफिकेशन दिव्य ज्ञानम इज टेक्निकली कॉल्ड तद्व ज्ञान और नॉलेज अबाउट द सुप्रीम वन वॉन्ट्स टू नो कृष्णा हाउ टू प्रैक्टिस डिवोशनल सर्विस वॉन्ट्स टू नो अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस हैव फुल फेथ ऑन वट वन रीड्स एंड हियर्स वॉन्ट्स टू एक्सेप्ट एवरीथिंग वन इज टोल्ड एंड वेरी सीरियस देन यू आर अ फिट कैंडिडेट to receive initiation otherwise wait for some time tad vigyanatham saguru eva bigachet when one is interested in transcendental subject matter of the absolute he should be initiated so you have to see what is your interest am i interested in dhanam jalam sundari or i want to become famous i want to attract opposite sex um and i want wealth then wait but when what are you interested uh, i want krishna i want to go deep in my sadhana um, um yeah i want whatever it's tad vigyanartham sa guru eva vigachhe when one is interested in the transcendental subject matter of the absolute i want to know more about krishna um i want to have a spiritual master i want to serve under guidance of guru maharaj i want to seriously take it up um then one should be he should be initiated such a person should approach a spiritual master in order to take diksha shivan bhagavatam also prescribes tashmad gurum prapadyeta jigyasu shaya uttama when one is actually interested in the transcendental science of the absolute truth he should approach the spiritual master that's when you approach a spiritual master when we have material desires why to approach a spiritual master Spiritual master is not there to fulfill our material desires, so give us blessings to fulfill material desires. He is there to speak about how to go forward, how to make progress. So it requires a strong initial faith, a strong practice, some interest in Krishna consciousness, some taste in Krishna consciousness, serious about Krishna consciousness. Now want to go to the next level, then accept the guru. Uh, Prabhupada said one should not accept a guru as a matter of uh, you know um, uh, show. Oh, he has a guru. He has a guru. I should also have a guru. You know, if you have that desire, better don't have a guru. Guru means tad vigyanatha. If you want to hear about the absolute truth, the science, how to go deep, then you should accept a spiritual master. If you want to deepen your chanting, then you accept a spiritual master. Uh, but first one has to be very sincere one who is actually interested in transcendental science of the absolute truth he should approach a spiritual master and it is also mentioned that uh, unless one approach a spiritual master one cannot make it to got it back to god one cannot go back to god spiritual master is a must when lord krishna came he accepted spiritual master sadhi panimuni just to set an example chitane mahaprabhu swayam bhagwan when he came he accepted ishwar puri as a spiritual master so we need spiritual master spiritual master connects us to guru parampara the disciplic succession coming from krishna and then the mercy flows the whole parampara mercy radha krishna's mercy mahaprabhu's mercy parampara mercy will flow, flow to us to the medium of spiritual master and we are officially connected to the disciplic succession and then empowerment comes and remaining vestige of material desires or um um lack of taste in krishna consciousness will be given by the guru parampara but one has to be very serious in one's practices um, and should not at least visibly desire anything material one should try to avoid one may feel bad i have these desires and that's okay if you see look at yourself and you say i have this envy i have this lust i have this anger problem but i really want to get rid of them i really want to go back to god i really want to make advancement i really want to go deep i really want to become purified accept a guru even if we have material diseases but if we are like i wish i had some more wealth i wish i can enjoy some woman i wish i had this desire then don't accept a guru first become purified sufficiently enough that you have the strength the spiritual strength to say no to material desires and say yes to krishna and you can follow that path and seriously engage in krishna's service and once you have come to that stage look for a guru 
the chanting of the holy names of krishna is so sublime that if one chants the hari krishna maha mantra offenselessly carefully avoiding the ten offenses he can certainly be gradually elevated to the point of understanding that there is no difference between the holy name of the lord and the lord himself so prabhupada says carefully avoid the ten offenses if you avoid the ten offenses you will see the transcendental nature of the name when you chant you will experience the divinity or the transcendence in the name and as you experience that you can see that krishna is actually present in the name and there is no difference between lord krishna and his name but when we are committing offenses then we will not be able to go deep in our sadhana in our chanting and then we will find the chanting as a very um, difficult task and we will not be able to experience krishna through the name because name is not different from krishna but how much the name has all the potencies um nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shakti so krishna has in invested all his transcendental energies in his names and krishna has hundreds and millions of names like krishna and govinda and all the transcendental energies are invested in these names but they will reveal to us based on krishna's will when krishna wants to reveal to us when he is pleased with us he will reveal and when he reveal we can know that krishna and his name are non different <clears throat> and when he reveals is when he is pleased with us and when he is pleased with us when we don't offend him because naturally if you offend somebody you displease them and how is krishna offended there are 10 offenses to the holy name those have to be avoided um and some common ones are to um um to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagate the holy names of the lord or sadhu nanda then to concerning of demi god like lord shiva or lord brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of lord vishnu to disobey the orders of spiritual master to blaspheme the vedic literatures to um all literature in pursuit of vedic version to not have complete faith in the chanting of hari krishna maha mantra um, um to consider chanting of hari krishna to be one of the ritualistic activity to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name to um, to not have complete uh, to um maintain material attachments uh, even after understanding so many instructions on this matter um, um and to be inattentive while chanting so there are all these offenses to the holy name so every day in all the temples across the world in his con temples we read these ten offenses so one should read them if possible memorize them one should chant them one should check with for oneself which offenses i am still committing okay in attention i am inattentive while chanting so it's an offense so lord will not reveal oh i have material attachments okay the lord will again not reveal himself to me oh i am offending vaishnavas the lord will not reveal himself to me oh i think krishna vishnu brahma are all the same it's again an offense to equate them so the lord will not reveal oh i am telling about krishna to those who are envious who are faithless i am trying to glorify krishna again the lord will not reveal oh i am thinking this hari krishna maha mantra is just like any other mantra again the lord will not reveal or oh, scripture says this but who knows again the lord will not reveal so one has to see read the ten offenses and one has to see where am i weak and if one is sincere one should carefully avoid the ten offenses sincerely chant gradually the holy name will advance the devotee will advance in his chanting of holy name and as one advances and absorbed one will come to realize actually krishna is present in his holy name then who is a proper candidate to advance in krishna consciousness one should know for certain that without chanting the holy name of the lord offenselessly one cannot be a proper candidate for advancement in krishna consciousness so in order to make progress one has to chant offenselessly um so there is nam aparad three stages of chanting there is nam aparad there is nam abhas and there is shuddha nam and above shuddha nam there is another last stage which is called prem nam 
So Nam Aparat is I'm committing offenses and I don't even know this is an offense. And I'm committing it anyways, unknowingly. So one is on the Nam Aparat stage. One may feel like um, I'm not committing any offenses, but one is still committing so many offenses. Nam Aparat stage. Nam Abhas is when one actually understands by the mercy of Krishna, what is an offense, what is not an offense, what to do, what not to do. One becomes very careful, not negligent. One carefully avoids. Once in a while, one, com one may commit some offenses, but one is seriously working on avoiding the 10 offenses. This is a stage of Nam Abhas. Abhas means practice. When you come to the stage of Nam Abhas or practice, then you get an abhas of the transcendental nature of the name or you get a semblance you get a reflection a reflection of shuddha nam is nam abhas you get a feeling of the transcendental nature of the name and when you completely avoid the 10 offenses you're completely attentive no material desires you only want krishna you have full faith in the scriptures you don't offend any Vaishnav. You obey the instruction of your spiritual master, senior devotees perfectly. You know the difference between Krishna and the demigods. When you are cleared with all these things, then you can come to the stage of Shuddhana by the mercy of Shri Guru. When Guru is happy with us, pleased with us, then one can come to the platform of Shuddhana or pure, pure name. <clears throat> so, desire to sincerely chant avoiding the 10 offenses one who is very much working in that direction he is a candidate for advancement those who chant while walking while talking while working and while driving and uh, somehow they try to finish their rounds attentive inattentive it's okay just try to get the number done they are not the right candidate for advancement they may become, by the mercy of Lord Krishna, they may come to serious practices at some point of time. But as of now, they are not taking their spiritual life seriously. It is described that when one chants the holy name, one should not do anything other than chant. When you chant, Prabhupada says, just chant. Don't do anything else. Don't broom or vacuum or cook or drive or talk and have some conversation. Best is in the morning. Seriously about the 10 offenses, be respectful to all the devotees, all the non-devotees, everybody. Don't become angry, be tolerant when things don't go your way. See that this is Krishna's arrangement for my verification. Continuously, seriously try to advance in your chanting. Then you become a proper candidate for advancement Krishna consciousness. Then everyone begins his devotional life from the neophyte stage. It's okay, wherever we lie today in our practice of Krishna consciousness, everybody begins their devotional life from the neophyte stage. Um, another sannyasi, he is Bhakti Charu Maharaj, sannyas disciple, Bhakti Prem Maharaj. Yeah. He says neophyte devotees mean new neophyte. Every day they come up with some of the other problems. They are neophytes, new neophytes. So everyone begins his devotional service from the neophyte stage. But if one properly finishes chanting the prescribed number of rounds of Harinam, he is elevated step by step to the highest platform, Uttama Adhikari. This one thing, if you accept seriously, it will take you from the very beginning stage to a very advanced stage from Kanishcha Adhikari to Madhyam Adhikari. And you see here, Prabhupada is showing by his example in the picture how to chant. You see how absorbed he is. You see how strict he is with his chanting. We don't see him vacuuming and driving and doing all the things. And then he's finishing his 16 notes. But we see him. Actually, Prabhupada will chant 64 notes. <clears throat> But we will see. That slide will also come. Uh, but you see how strict he is with one's chanting. And if you take this one thing very seriously, chanting, not loosely, uh, but seriously, if you take this one thing sincerely, this one thing will take you from the beginning, Kanishta stage to the advanced Uttama stage. 
we have witnessed the some of our contemporaries who are supposed to be great teachers have gradually fallen into material conception of life because they have failed to chant the holy name of the lord so there were many devotees during the time of shila prabhupada they took up chanting very seriously at some point of time they became weak because of maya's influence and they gave up chanting they reduced their chanting and gradually they give a krishna consciousness if you take the chanting very seriously you will progress if this part becomes weak gradually you will fall down so one thing that has to be taken to the utmost seriousness is the chanting of the holy name if you just chant seriously everything will come all your needs material needs will also be fulfilled everything will happen all your desires will also be fulfilled if they are not detrimental to your krishna consciousness this one chanting nam chintamani krishna chaitanya rasa vigraha um abhin uh, uh, yeah it says uh, nam is compared to chintamani means desire to just take this one thing seriously and all your spiritual desires will be fulfilled um and then what is the prescribed number of rounds prabhupada says the krishna consciousness movement prescribes 16 rounds daily because people in the western countries cannot concentrate for long periods while chanting on beats therefore the minimum number of rounds is prescribed however shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur used to say that unless one chants at least 64 rounds of japa 100000 names one is considered fallen patita according to this calculation practically every one of us is fallen but because we are trying to serve the supreme lord with all seriousness and without duplicity without duplicity without duplicity duplicity means i will chant my rounds i am serious and then when i have time i'll watch movies i'll go to restaurants and i will do other things not prescribed and in front of devotees i will pose myself as very sincere very spiritual very nice devotee but then i will do something on the back which nobody knows so duplicity means having two behaviors uh, one external one internal so um, without duplicity means we only want krishna and we are serious at every minute of our life we are serious about whatever it takes to help us advance in our krishna consciousness so practically every one of us is fallen but because we are trying purposes we are trying to serve the supreme lord with all seriousness as much as we can we are trying our best and without duplicity we can expect the mercy of lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who is famous as patita pavana the deliverer of the fall so prabhu says uh, minimum rounds is 64 but because in the western countries people are not able to focus their mind for such a long time we have made it 16 according to saraswati thakur who was his spiritual master anybody who doesn't learn 64 rounds is considered fallen or patita but um, because we are sincerely trying to serve the spiritual master without duplicity we can expect the mercy of shichitana mahaprabhu and can go back home back to god in this life also So Prabhupada gave made, made this as a concession. He says, "Chant minimum sixteen rounds. Follow four hundred different principles. I will take you back home, back to God." Uh, this is the mercy of Shri Prabhupada, our immediate acharya, because uh, he has given us a concession. Um, previously, sixty-four was minimum. He gave us a concession. He said, "At least do this much." That is his compassion, his love. Um, so do that seriously, and gradually you will advance. Then, on what basis are these divisions of dear fights? Shraddha vana jana hai bhakti arhi kari uttama udhama kanista shraddha anusari. Shraddha vana jana hai bhakti arhi kari. One who is shraddha vana. Shraddha vana means faithful. One who is faithful, he can take to bhakti. to begin bhakti you need to have some faith some faith in the holy name some faith in association some faith in bhagavad gita some faith in krishna some faith some faith some faith shraddha those who do not have faith cannot take up bhakti 
So the qualification to begin your spiritual life is faith. Um, and then as faith grows, one becomes more and more advanced. Uttama Madhyama Kanishtra Shraddha Anusari. Based on Shraddha, one is categorized as a beginner devotee, as a medium devotee, or as a high devotee. And the beginning, Shraddha Vana Jana Hai Bhakti Adhikari. Um, one wants Bhakti, one needs faith. How do we know our spiritual identity with Krishna, who we are? When one fully engages in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he gradually realizes his own spiritual identity. Prabhupada says, fully engage in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then you will gradually realize your own spiritual identity. We have a relationship with Krishna. We have forgotten that relationship. We want to reawaken that relationship. How will we know our relationship? Prabhupada says, fully engage in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The devotee will gradually realize his own spiritual identity. Unless one faithfully chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Krishna does not reveal himself. So we have to sincerely chant and then Krishna will reveal. Krishna wants to reveal to us. But are we ready? Are we sincere? <clears throat> so, something more on Uttamadikari. Uttamadikari is not interested in blaspheming others. So, Uttamadikari has no desire to criticize. He doesn't want to speak anything bad about anyone. So, he is not interested in blaspheming others. His heart is completely clean. There is no trace of envy, lust, anger, greed, pride, there is no trace. His heart is completely clean and he has attained a realized state of Anala Krishna consciousness. He is completely self-realized. So he is a Uttamadikari. Out of many such Vaishnavas, one may be found to be very seriously engaged in the service of the Lord and strictly following all the regulatory principles chanting a prescribed number of rounds on Japa beads and always thinking of how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. Such a Vaishnava should be accepted as an Uttama Adhikari, a highly advanced devotee, and his association should always be sought. So very seriously engaged, very advanced, very pure, always thinking about how to spread the mission of Lord Chaitanya, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So, such kind of devotees, one should humbly serve. And Uttamadikari Vaishnava can be recognized by his ability to convert many fallen souls to Vaishnavism. So, this is a statement of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Prabhupada goes in the purport. <clears throat> one can know <clears throat> the category of a Vaishnava uh, based on how many devotees' hearts have been transformed by coming in contact with him. Um, and the best example is Shri Prabhupada how the whole world was inspired and was transformed. Um, then, so this is some categories of Uttamadikari. They are not critical. They are pure. They have realized their spiritual identity. They are seriously engaged in Krishna consciousness. They strictly follow four degree principles of no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, no forms of illicit sex always thinking about how to expand, disinterested in material enjoyment. They can become a guru. Prabhupada says they can accept disciples. Those are Uttamadikari. How many have taken to Krishna consciousness is one of the symptoms. And they are offenseless in chant. It's not that one can take one or two. All the ten categories together will make one Uttamadikari. He has real spiritual identity, offenseless in chanting, have um, is is fully focused in teaching activities, um, very serious, completely pure at heart, no desire to criticize, uncritical. So who is a pure devotee? When one is situated on a neophyte platform, one cannot understand the devotional ingredients of a pure unalloyed devotee. However, when the novice engages in devotional service, especially in deity worship, and follows the order of a bona fide spiritual master, he is a pure devotee. Anyone can take advantage of hearing about Krishna consciousness from such a devotee and thus gradually become purified. In other words, any devotee who believes 
that the holy name of the Lord is identical with the Lord is a pure devotee, even though he may be in a neophyte stage. By his association, others may also become Vaishnavas. So pure devotee is not somebody necessarily who um, is uh, completely pure at heart. They are pure devotees. A pure devotee, Prabhupada says, can be a neophyte devotee also. A pure devotee can be a uh, Madhyama Adhikari also. A pure devotee can be Uttama Adhikari also. So pure devotee is one who is completely surrendered to the service of Sri Guru, following every instruction. He has pure faith. All I want is Krishna. He is working in that direction. Um, he may not be very conclusive in the scriptures, may not have read everything, but very dedicated in his service, in his chanting. Um, and he is pure in his motives, may not be pure at heart. So he is also a pure devotee. So pure devotee can be Uttam Adhikari or pure devotee can be a beginner who Prabhupada says, um, when a novice engages in devotional service, especially in deity worship, follows the orders of spiritual master, is he is a pure devotee. Anyone can take advantage of hearing about Krishna from such a devotee and thus gradually become purified. His faith is pure. Impure faith means I need many other things. Pure faith means only Krishna is the goal of my life. When your faith is pure, only Krishna, then you are also a pure devotee. In other words, any devotee who believes that the holy name of Lord is identical with the Lord is a pure devotee. Um, <clears throat> even though he may be in a neophyte, this is quite striking. Okay, so that's the end of this verse 5. Um, we discuss about Uttama Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari, Kanishta Adhikari, how we go from Kanishta to Madhyama after Harinam initiation, when one is seriously engaged, one engages in preaching activities, um, one serves the deities, one is very careful with devotee relationship, makes friendship with the devotees, avoids the envious, one gradually comes to the stage of Madhyama and um, when one is completely pure at heart, um, conclusive in his understanding of scriptures, full Shastra understanding, um, um, and realizes his spiritual identity, his relationship with Krishna, um, um, absorbed serious in preaching activities, uh, he comes to a stage of Uttama Adhikari. Pure faith means pure devotee, and he can mean any of those stages. And one should mentally honor those who are Prakrita Sahajyas, who have many material desires, critical about other devotees. Mentally honor, no need to associate. If you are cultivating them, help them, train them. Madhyama, make friendship with them. Uh, bow down to them. Uttama, serve them. Take instructions from them, follow them. And gradually, and then we discuss about initiation. Uh, very important principle, if you are serious, without material desires, uh, and if you want to know the science of Krishna, make advancement. Want to know how to go to the next level, then you should get initiated. As soon as one, in, one is initiated, Krishna accepts that devotee to be as good as himself. One surrenders to the service of the person to God. Okay, so let's see if there are some discussions at this point of time. Hare Krishna, Babaji. Devika Mataji, Hare Krishna. Um, I have few questions, Prabhuji. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, so, Prabhuji, uh, like uh, for the three types of neophytes, mm. so can uh, Prakrita Bhakta can also be the initiated devotees? Yes. Prakrita Bhakta, the difference Prabhupada mentions is he thinks very high of himself. Um, he can receive initiation, but he may think, I'm very sincere, I'm best among other devotees. Um, so he has that pride in his heart. And um, the Harinam Bhakta, um, Kanishta Adhikari, he seriously engaged in a humble mood, serve Guru Vaishnavas, um, doesn't think, he thinks himself highly unqualified by the mercy of Guru, I'm doing this service. Um, uh, he thinks others as 
very very sincere devotees he respect everyone uh, gradually he comes to the stage of madhyam so one goes from prakrita sahaja to prakrita bhakta to kanishta bhakta or harinam bhakta to madhyam yeah thank you so prabhuji in um yeah i had one more question in that same thing only but you answered it i just have one more like the following question like i had a question is it possible that a harinam bhakta can fall down but you answered it in initial stage like in uh, the next few slides so um so the reason behind fall down you said like they get more attracted to maya and everything so is it due to bad association or um, something else prabhu ji well uh, depends upon what kind of fall down one fall down is one give gives up holy name and one subtle fall down is one lose the taste in the holy name so um, few things my spiritual master says which can make us fall down one is false pride one is vaishnava prath and the third is asat sang bad association offending a devotee of the lord and false pride these things three things can lead us to fall down yes sir just last question so prabhuji you said like um, we should avoid uh, the association of prakrita sahaja and of neophytes so what we um, we have the same kind of uh, people like that comes in the family or like you know immediate family uh, what we should do in that case okay so question is can you repeat the question again yes prabhuji so um it's uh, it was said that um we should try to avoid the association of prakrita sahaja kind of new fights right mm-hmm. so what if those kind of those types of new fights are in our family or like you know in our very close um like we can't really avoid their association what we can yes. do in that situation a difficult question okay. so one thing is association means taking inspiration from them no need to reveal your mind no need to take guidance from them should i do this should I not do this no no need take guidance from serious sincere more advanced devotees guidance from them you can serve those who are prakrita sahajyas but you don't associate with them in a way don't take inspiration of what they are doing don't be inspired if they are not practicing i also don't need to practice if they don't follow like adashi so i also don't need to follow like adashi they don't chant so i can reduce my chanting it's okay so don't get influenced by their activities don't take their activities who according to scriptures follow the pure devotees follow prabhupad prabhupad books strictly and um, if you if your service is to serve them you can serve them you can be friendly with them you can give your association to them you can inspire them don't open your mind to them you can open your mind with respect to something a job something not related to krishna consciousness but not related to krishna consciousness like um what should be my consciousness by chant how can i go deeper in my chant what what do you think about uh, um um uh, taking this service so one has to be very intelligent and pray to krishna lord krishna says tesham sadata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayanti te those who are engaged in serving me with love i give them the intelligence by which they can come to me so if you are seriously engaged in serving krishna with love krishna will give you the intelligence from within your heart how to make progress and krishna will give you the intelligence how to avoid the pitfalls is it on it yes prabhu ji thank you so much any other discussion any other question yes prabhu ji then we pranam then the pranam prabhu ji i uh, it can be little repetitive but uh, uh, you mentioned that um, uh, uh, in order to accept a spiritual master first we need to be sincere and we have to have our, our rounds going on and at least have that thinking that we need to avoid um uh, uh, 
material engagements although like we may it not be possible at that point of time but at least we should have that thought that i want to avoid it but uh, like for us like i'm talking about myself we just doing uh, chanting because it's the right thing to do but we still not think to avoid those we are not working hard to avoid those material engagement so how can we you know uh, so you don't have to avoid them you have to avoid desiring them yes you... yes like we don't even like think to to not uh, desire those things you know they come at and we accept them so yeah uh, basically prabhu um if your desire is going back to godhead krishna is most important thing to me um my job and my other things are part of my dharma um i try to do it uh, because i need to earn i need to work i need to study um, um this is not something because it's a goal of my life but this is something that is my requirement to be able to live survive um, ambition means i want to become like this and have this much and especially also along with wealth um women one thing is yes i see i have this desire i don't want it that is okay one thing is i am running behind it i really need it this is most important thing for me so there is a difference prabhu a devotee may have desire but they are disgusted by their own desires they think why do i have this desire how do i come out of these desires get initiated does it answer for you yes prabhu ji uh, like i was thinking maybe like doing chanting can help us to remove this uh, definitely to become sincere like not even if like, yes yeah. if we have strong desire sincere practice of krishna consciousness as we advance they will naturally go away gradually yes okay prabhu then we thank you sir any other discussion hari krishna prabhu ji uh, just one small question prabhu ji um uh, uh, why are these categories called adhikaris prabhu ji uh, kanishtha adhikari uttam adhikari madhyam adhikari uh, why adhikari prabhu ji well adhikar means qualification like for example how much adhikar i have what level of how deep krishna consciousness can i practice what is my adhikar so adhik kanishtha adhikari means their adhikar to go deep in krishna is very limited madhyama means they can go deeper uttama means their adhikar for bhakti is very high or their heart is very pure they are very much attached to krishna so they get that much revelation from lord krishna okay prabhu thank you prabhu thank you so prabhu ji can we say like um is it qualification so you can say like um it's like the how deep they want to go in the bhakti like um that yes okay yeah. yes yes very good how much quali- how much qualified a devotee is is based on yeah, one can categorize this anishta mate mota one anything else uh, uh, hari krishna prabhu ji so i have one question uh, uh, suppose if kids ask like let's uh, some it's a summer vacation let's go for a movie or restaurant so is that wrong prabhu ji if once in a while if we go uh, <laughs> that to <laughs> that to i mean it's i i really yeah. don't want to go but i can't avoid because kids will also ask for the uh, yeah i understand here is the yeah. answer for you based on your family situation if your husband is not very favorable go avoid anyan garlic if husband wife both take up krishna consciousness and both are serious about eating only prasad and very careful then at one point of time you can make the decision also but it won't be possible till um, some people husband wife very serious but they take their kids and they make their kids eat be practical um, because kids are not at that stage and then if you suffocate them they may 
become against also so they have then eat those which are relatively pure things without uh, like alcohol or meat products to make them eat based on what child himself personally wants and parents have more self control so one has to see based on one's time and circumstances and just because you are going your family situation does not make you insincere it's just you can pray to krishna if you like for a more favorable situation eventually is it all right yes sir thank you sir thank you Abhiji, I just want to add one thing for Soumya Mataji. It's like my self-realization only. So I had the same problem, Mataji, when my kids were like a little bit younger. So once uh, like they get uh, used to, you know, because kids, they want to go to restaurant only if they, you know, that's like they're kind of, they feel that's different. So if they get that difference every, like at home, so we generally, now they don't, my kids, like I'm talking about me, they, now they don't tell because um, I try to uh, make, uh, like fill up that difference. And we go for like, um, for a picnic and everything. And I cook prashadam from home, like the restaurant style prashadam and I take it. So now they don't even tell. So it's, I understand, like I have also two kids. And so when they have long vacations or something, so, you know, slowly, like that happened many times with me also. So that's, I wanted to just share that self-realization, like, uh, you know, how we can slowly go into that because kids, they don't know the difference now. So once they, because now they know only, okay, maybe restaurant things, it looks good in picture. It looks good in, like, it may taste good but they don't know that they are not hygienic and everything, et cetera, et cetera. So once you try to make those same things at home and you know, kids, they first love to eat them with their eyes. <laughs> so if it looks same appealing and everything, so we can, we still go outside. We go to parks, we go to go for a picnic. We take prashadam from home and we just enjoy that. So kids, they love going outside and having, so we can just substitute that a little bit. Thank you, Mataji. I will, I will try to do, implement that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Thank you Mataji. Thank you, Mataji, for sure. Good. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Very grateful for this Vaishnav Sangha. My pranams to all the assembled Vaishnavas, Panchakal Patagur Vaishya, Pepas Indu Kati Vacha, Patita Nam Pavanendi Vaishnavya Namunaka, Ananta Kodi Vaishnavya Ntaki Vaishnavya Prabhupada. And next week we'll discuss about um, how to avoid Vaishnav Aparat, offenses to Vaishnavas. That is the verse number six. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhupada. Thank you, Krishna. 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 Thank you, Krishna.